Welcome to Keeping Up With Trends. This is Fred Razak, Senior Trading Strategist here at CM Trading. And we're joined with your host, Sergio David. So we're entering part four of our ongoing series around the uh, stock market. So we've spoken about Forex, we've spoken about stocks, and previously we spoke about indices. So today I'd like us to unpack one of the biggest markets there is, which is commodities. So all things energy, metals, oil, gold related. So I guess to kick things off, what are commodities, Fred? Um, so on a basic level, they are a basic um, gradable item that is consumed by the world in masses, uh, but it's gradable, meaning like if you're looking at gold, you're looking at 18 karat gold. So 18 karat gold being extracted from the earth in Australia is just like the gold that's being extracted from anywhere else in the world. So it's a consumable, consumable item that is gradable that we consume on masses. So it could be anywhere between, like we call it, the softies, the grains, uh, wheat, yeah. uh, um, coffee. Um, and then you get into the metals, the palladium, the platinum, the gold, the silver, um, etc. And then there's the oils, the energy, right? Sweet crude oil, Brent. Um, all types of oils. So there's several categories of them. And this is, goes back to the beginning of time. I mean, this is really where the financial market started, with gold. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was literally a gold standard, you know, not too long ago. Right. You I know. mean, the US dollar used to be based on it. Yeah. And uh, it was a pretty good way of tracking, you know, a specific country's wealth. But and you know, even today, to stay. you know, I mean, many countries to this day, including South Africa, are literally built on gold. I mean, it's changed well, I, quite a bit, you know, now, but that was literally the case for South Africa. Uh, everything is based on gold. I mean, even to, you know, like the, the, a country's wealth is based on how much gold deposit it really has. Um, and they buy gold and China buys gold to... You know, anytime a country needs some sort of collateral on its credit, let's say it's, it's borrowing money, you know, from a, from a neighboring country or it's purchasing something from another country, it has to have a credit line. And, you know, it, gold is, you know, the standard that we still use to this day um, as an arbitrary item, but not so arbitrary because it had more of a meaningful um it had more of a meaningful consumption item. I mean, if you look back into the history of gold, gold was very much, you know, used for jewelry and, you know, a country's wealth was, you know, yeah, coils of gold. And, you know, on that same token, there's oil, you know, which literally created, you know, most of the Middle East. I mean, Saudi Arabia... What pre nineteen nineteen sixties, you know, compared yeah, to what it is today, right. it's literally like night and day. And uh, yeah, so so yeah, so I guess my next question is now that you've explained, you know, sort of what collection of commodities is, why trade them? Why trade gold? Why trade any commodity? For example, I mean, there are there's stocks, there's forex. As we spoke in our last uh, session, there's indices. So gold is really supply and demand. Um, it's what we have in the marketplace right now. It's also what is demanded in the market. So you mentioned oil, and oil is a good example of that. And you know, depending on what the particular season is, uh, the cycle of the year, um, the season, and and also the consumption rate, the weather sometimes could actually affect the price of oil. So, for example, 90% of the population of the world lives in the Northern Hemisphere, which, right. which historically speaking or yearly speaking, goes through uh, its seasons, winter, summer, um, uh, fall, and spring in between. But those are the two extremities, right? So in the winter, obviously, we need oil to heat the homes. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's a very big deal. Um, and so if you're having a very warm winter, then the consumption is going to dip. 
And that means that oil producing countries will then have a surplus and they don't want that because they're paying interest on that surplus. So, you know, even if you say, okay, so, you know, countries who are producing it, let them produce it less and it will increase the price, but they don't want to, they don't want to be in that type of situation. They want to be in a situation where the price of oil is much more steady. L let me give you an example. Let's say you and your significant other, you're going to surprise her and you're going to take her to Hawaii. Right. Wow. You ready? <laughs> you ready Go for me. that trip? Go me. <laughs> That's what Go I'm saying. You. You, got a lot of, you got a lot of credit points for doing that. Okay. Um, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> so, so. So let's say you're booking it two months in advance. Right. Okay. So there's airfare. How far is... Um, how far is Hawaii from South Africa? I can imagine Jeez. it's a hop, skip, and a jump. <laughs> yeah. You'd probably have to travel not through... I don't know. Where would you travel from? Uh, that is an interesting question. I'm pre I would go South Africa. I'd go to maybe Rio de Janeiro, de Janeiro to Hawaii. It's oh, yeah? You think that you would know, be shorter? 80,000 kilometers. You know, <laughs> you think that would be shorter than going the other way. I would imagine. I, th I think so. I think it would be shorter, but yeah, that would still be an insane uh, trip. A lot, a lot of traveling. Okay, so let's just argue the following thing. Okay, um, you would have to pay at least, let's say, two thousand dollars for that ticket. Okay. Okay. Something around that. Now, the airline does not know the price of oil in two months from now. Sure. Right? So how are they already being able to um, give you a price for a flight that will happen in two months from now? So what the commodities market is, is really a future market that okay. every month Makes sense. you can buy the delivery of a particular commodity in a month, two months, three months, four months, five months. Now, in oil's case, it's monthly because it's consumed so much. Okay. Uh, in other future markets like gold, um, I believe it's also monthly. Um, not that the assets on our uh, trading platform are um, on certain items, they're populated as future items like oil, like Brent, like sugar. All those are, but gold and, and silver are not. Uh, but let's because they're they're a spot rate. Okay, so let's put that aside. So what the airline is going to do is that they'll buy oil in advance now, okay, so that they could set up prices so that Sergio could take his significant other, right? They they know that you need to plan ahead. They know that you want to, you know, get the best price, and they want to provide for you the service. So there's like this balance of making these deliveries for commodities from month to month. Now that creates a tremendous um, trading opportunity for traders in the market. Because if, for example, the current price okay, is trading in a discount of a future price, well, then there's an arbitrage. Okay. Um, and you could take advantage of it. Just buy the oil now, hold it and sell it next month, right? And making that difference. Right. So there are multiple opportunities in trading commodities, but ultimately that's how commodities operate. Commodities operate from a standpoint because the commodity needs to be um, set up in a situation where the prices are not fluctuating too much, right? That they're fluctuating within reason so that nor you lose money, nor the airline. Now, imagine, okay, if the airline couldn't book that price of oil in advance and they only bought oil now and the price was to go up to $400 or let's say an extreme case, right? Then right. when they really need the oil, they booked your price at, let's say, 2000 but really the price of oil went up. So really the price of your ticket should be about four to 5000 for them to validate you know, even yeah. making that trip for themselves. Yeah. So in order to stop these discrepancies and make, you know, the economies work, 
you know, that's why the future market for commodities were set up. You know, I'm always fascinated by how much, you know, I mean, there's a lot of factors, you know, that can affect commodities. But one of the factors that I think a lot of people don't realize uh, is weather. You know, I mean, there's a lot of talk about, you know, global warming for the past, well, 20 years. But when you see it in action affecting, you know, a specific commodity, it brings it all home. Like, I remember one of our chats, I think it was last year, back in 2023, where we were talking about, you know, the price of coffee, how that had gotten up, that's gone up. And that was because back in 2022, um, Brazil and South America, you know, world's biggest coffee suppliers um they had suffered horrendous uh winter weather and it wiped out you know quite a significant part of their stock which meant in 2023 you know when we were chatting about it prices would go up because like you said it's a futures market so they you know whatever they harvest this year counts for next year's you know products so you know i'm always surprised by by how weather affects it and it affects things, you know, going forward in the future. So absolutely. I mean, um, orange juice, for example, depending on what's happening yeah. in Florida, if they're having oh yeah, if they're having hurricanes or what have you, you know, that affects the price of orange juice. And you know, it's funny because there's this really great movie called Trading Places uh, with Eddie Murphy. Oh uh, yes, yes, yes. It's a classic. It's with Dan Aykroyd, Eddie Murphy. Dan and, Aykroyd, yes, that was a very good movie. He trades a, well. He literally trades places um, with a stockbroker. Right, and it's a it's a fascinating. It's also a great movie to learn about the markets because that's exactly yeah. what happens. That's exactly what what happens in the markets. Um, you know, also, you know, you're talking about weather. You know, in uh, there's a hurricane season in the U.S. between August and, and I would say October uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. And the Gulf of Mexico is really a very vital port for Texas, where right. it's a oil refineries. Um, and that affects the distribution of, um, of oil. And that'll, pre that'll add some stress on oil. And what people have done, and even like individual people, they have you know, been able to buy satellite images, and you could buy satellite images online, uh, and to see where the ships are, where the vessels of oils are, uh, to see if there's a backlog, to see if they're shipping on time. <laughs> and they're actually wow. trading it based on those <laughs> images. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. And it makes sense. It makes it makes a lot of sense. But it makes total sense. If I see that there's yeah. a dis you know, if there's a disruption in the distribution of oil you know, prices are going to go up. Oh, prices yeah. are going to go up. Let me buy some oil on the market. And it's not insider trading. You're just, you know, you're just, you know, watching what the markets are doing. Yeah, in a, you know, very uh, physical, tangible way. And applying that, you know, research to your trades. So to end things off, what advice do you have for anyone out there who wants to diversify their portfolio with commodities? So, I mean, just, I mean, I guess you could, Look, I mean, trading the financial markets is trading the financial markets from a technical analysis point of view. However, right. you do need to know the nuances of different types of assets so that you could appreciate exactly how it's going to differ, for example, than a stock or an index or some other category of assets. Okay, so commodities are really standalone assets. I mean, uh, but they do have a relationship with the markets. For example, when gold goes up, historically yeah. speaking, the indices are supposed to go down, right? Uh, so they are correlated to a certain degree. Uh, but you have to learn these nuances over time and to really appreciate how to trade commodities vis-a-vis -vis the greater market. And on that note, I think we'll leave things there. Tune in next time where we unpack more things stock market related and make you a better trader.